This is the moment that Garry Kasparov made his most famous blunder ever. Technically winning position, yeah. he's just exchanging pieces now. It's all over. Put your king on the screen. Like, what's the queen takes g4? What's he overlooked? Now I just had to cover this game. It feels like a rite of passage for any YouTube channel to cover this game, play between Anand and Kasparov way back in 1996. So let's see what happened here. Anand kicks off with e4. Gary goes c5, he played this his whole career, and now we had knight f3, d6, and these are all the standard opening moves of the Nidorf variation, named after Miguel Nidorf, famous Argentinian grandmaster, pawn a6, this starts the variation here. So bishop e3 was played by Anand, and this is the so-called English attack, and now Gary goes for this knight g4 move, and when I'm looking at this with the chess.com analysis, it's actually calling this the anti-English variation, which I didn't know. So it attacks that bishop, now the bishop comes to g5, you might think it's lost time, but then black's also lost some time with this knight, and now h6 kicks the bishop, it drops back to h4, and g5 from Gary, a really aggressive variation here as we can see, so although you weaken that king side, you are gaining good control over these dark squares here, and bishop g7 really solidifies that control, especially of this e5 square. So bishop e2 was played, hits this knight, and now a really aggressive move from Gary, this is also the main line, pawn to h5 played. And now you don't have time to actually play something like pawn h3, because then h4 comes, this is actually a better game for black, hitting this bishop, won't go through all the lines there, Equally, if you go f3 to kick the knight, well then it jumps into e3 here. If you just develop normally with your queen, your bishop's getting trapped. So you really have to do something there on the king side, and that's why taking the knight is actually the best move, giving up the bishop pair. You know, it looks strange to give up your bishops, but this is the whole reason. There's tactical problems otherwise. And now this one was recaptured. The pawn came to f3, the bishop drops back, and now this bishop tucks away on f2, it gets away from those pawns, hits a nice diagonal, and also defends this knight. So this knight developed c6, queen d2 develops, also hits that pawn, but it's not actually a threat, because knight e5 was played by Gary, good move, coming into c4, and you can't actually win this pawn here, or then you go and get your queen trapped with bishop h6, now if you take this pawn, well then we can actually check and win your queen. If you drop back here, then you can go like this and trap the queen. After it drops back, you can go bishop f4 or pawn h4. None of it's working. So that pawn is immune. We had castles instead from Vichy. And now this pawn kicked onto g4, a very, very aggressive opening as we can see here. And f4 from Vichy, he's trying to keep things closed on the king side. Plus these pawns do look really nice, of course, in the center for white. You know, white has a lot of attacking ideas here as well. So the knight came to c4, queen e2 hit the knight. And now you don't want to be taking this pawn. Rook a to b1 just gives way too much play for white. So instead that knight was defended with the rook. Now b3 kicked it, although it does weaken this diagonal here. Not ideal, but okay, it gets rid of that powerful knight. And now knight a3 from Kasparov looks slightly strange, but actually this is the most logical move. It's coming back to b5 to complete that circuit. Then the bishop might jump in if it was captured. So the knight came to d5 now from Vichy. That was attacked on c3, of course, by the rook here. But now pawn e6 from Gary, and here Vichy goes wrong. When I'm running this with the engine, it actually finds this really beautiful move. Now Vichy goes knight b4, the human move here, but you can actually go queen uh, knight to b6 here. You hit both of these pieces, of course, so you kind of have to take that one, and then there's this knight e6 stuff. This is really, really nice. You open up this attack on the queen, then you're actually picking up this bishop on g7 with check. Good game for white here. So after the knight hits b6, you actually need to be taking on d4 like this. Bishop recaptures, and then crashing through on c2. The queen could save itself, the rook could save itself, and say this rook comes to the center now, you know, this is one possible variation. Well, white's a pawn down, but we can see all the compensation for that pawn, you know, nice initiative here through the center. So we didn't have that line there of knight to b6. Not easy to see, of course, in a blitz game unless you've prepared it. 
So Vichy goes knight b4 instead. Now this queen came to a5 after knight b4, hits this knight here. And now if you bring this knight back to d3, well then this queen can come and sit on c3. It's camping out there, attacking this piece twice now. It's just a good game for black. So instead we had queen e1 defending the knight, and black's already better here by the way. And now pawn h4 from Kasparov, those ones just keep going, really beautiful combination of both sides of the board. And you can't take this one, or then you lose your knight on d4, this is the problem here. So instead bishop e3 was played, anticipating any kind of g3 stuff, kicking that bishop. But now Kasparov goes h3 instead, and this forces the pawn on, but now you've weakened this square, there's checkmating threats there later on. So knight b5 from Kasparov, he recycles that one. And if you take here, it's just no good. You open this bishop on your rook. This bishop can then take back and hit this rook. So that's just game over. So the rook came to the d file instead. Now we had knight c3 sitting on that wonderful outpost. And it now hits this rook on d1 as well as the pawn on e4. Big problems for white here. So Vichy dropped this knight back to d3 now. And he's setting up tactics because if you move the knight to take the rook or the pawn, well then you actually leave your queen on prees on this a5 square. So it retreated back to c7 here, and now technically the best move is pawn e5, saving that one, giving an exchange, but Vichy goes rook c1, Kasparov snaps off here, and now pawn f5 from Vichy, he's trying to generate counterplay, but it's all very desperate now, because after pawn e5, keeping the center closed, not opening the file for the rook, now f6 was played, desperate to open lines, but Kasparov simply chops that one off. He's now two pawns ahead here. Knight f5 from Vichy, that one has to be chopped. It's way too powerful. Queen c6 now played, threatening mate in one. Vichy covers, the queen came to e4. Really powerful centralizing move, hits that rook and also pins this bishop now because the queen's unprotected. So this one dropped back, covered the queen. Knight d5 now hits the bishop. How do you actually defend that one? You can't move it away without exchanging queens and your two pawns down. So the rook came across the cover and now Kasparov is just absolutely killing it. He's about four pawns ahead when you run this with the engine and he can just simplify here into a winning end game. But this is where he does it in the wrong way and makes his famous blunder. So the way to simplify here is by taking with the knight because the queen's forced to recapture and you chop these ones off. But what Kasparov did in the game was after this rookie one move, he took with the queen here, a fatal error, because now Vichy can just snap off on g4 and black's in an absolute world of trouble. Both of these pieces attacked by the queen and the queen is attacked by the rook here. So you don't have time to save your queen or then we can take here, for example, we check, it's just absolutely awful. So Kasparov castles his king, saves bishop, saves rook, and now we had the queen snapped off. He does play it in the best way here, Kasparov, to do that. The knight recaptures, but he's just lost a queen for a rook here, should be completely lost. But to his credit, he really drums up some chances here, as we'll see. So the queen now took on h3, restoring those pawns, but the knight takes on c2. Black's now a pawn ahead again, plus heading for d4. Queen d7 from Vichy, excellent move, hits both of those pawns, and it's really hard to actually move these rooks, they're very tied down now. So we had the knight coming to d4, no longer needs babysitting by the rook. Now we had takes on b7, Gary saves this pawn with a5, king g2, the rook now came to c3, hits the knight, so it came back to b2, and it's heading for this c4 square where it's gonna do a lot of damage on the black position. So knight c2 played, knight c4, pawn d5 kicks it, but it jumps into d6, more pressure on this pawn here, plus you could be heading here. So knight e3 check played, the king moved, and then pawn to f5. This is Gary's only hope, these central pawns. Queen d7 now played, looking to give checks here. Pawn f4 from Gary, we had check on e6, and now here after king h7, knight f7, Gary's forced to give up an exchange here. I mean, say you capture on f4, for example, or g3 rather, well then there's this simple mating motif. The knight hops back. This is the only square for the king. 
and you bring across the queen, you're checkmating on h7, it's completely unavoidable. The queen and knight are just such a deadly powerful combination when they work together. So after this move here of knight to f7, the rook chopped off, queen recaptures, this rook came back to c6, and this is where Gary is just doing brilliantly right now. You know, he's threatening to check, and the knight is actually covering these squares, so you really have to be careful here as white. Takes on f4 is forced, gives the king a square. The rook came to f6, hits that queen, and now don't blunder with this check, of course. Then the rook blocks, and you give the queen back. You actually are winning the game there as black. So queen c7 played instead, pressures that pawn, so it kicked on to e4, and now pawn f5, another critical move, by the way. Say, for example, you went a3, looking to generate a pass pawn. Well, again, there's the rook h6 stuff. And the king actually doesn't have an escape route from these checks. You can just keep going on this file, even if you step up, you keep checking. There's just no way out of the box here for white. If you come to g5, for example, well then we just keep on checking here and the knight covers this critical f5 square. So we didn't have that pawn a3 move. Vichy saw this, of course. Instead, he goes pawn f5 here and now he gives the king some room to run away like this if those checks start. So we had d4 instead from Gary, but now queen e7 hits that e4 pawn, still keeps threats around the king, rook h6 check, king to g3 here, knight d1 hit the rook, but now it lifts into f4, brilliant manoeuvre, pawn e3, rook g4, final move of the game here, because we're about to checkmate on g7, and black just can't stop that threat as we can see. So a wonderful game between these two players. If you want to see another amazing game by Anand, click here. Thanks very much for watching and see you soon.